Do you ever wonder why the men you never pay attention to are the most obsessed with you, but the ones you actually like don't even look in your direction? Isn't it weird how the men you treat the worst end up treating you the best? There's a very strange truth hidden underneath the surface that you probably didn't even realize, which is why on today's show, we're going to be discussing why ignoring men makes you irresistible to them. That way, even when you come across the highest of high value men, you'll be able to make him desperate to make you his wife. I want you to imagine there's two scenarios. Let's say we meet out at an event. You walk into the event and you see a bunch of people and you see me, you recognize me. You're like, oh my God, you're my favorite YouTuber. I watch you on stream all the time. You're so awesome. I love your show. And you come up to me and you say hello and you introduce yourself and I say hello and I introduce myself to you and I smile and everything's good and it's good and we have a conversation back and forth. That is scenario number one. Scenario number two, you walk into the same event you see me, so you come up to me to have a conversation with me, and as soon as you reach your hand out to introduce yourself, this is my response to you. Oh, 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 please, please. Of those two scenarios, which one do you think you would spend more time thinking about after it happened? Probably spend more time thinking about scenario number two. Do I smell? It wasn't my breath. Here is the connection between that whole story and analogy. Part of what makes you irresistible when you begin ignoring men is the fact that you trigger insecurities in them. You're triggering insecurities in him because of the fact that you're ignoring him, not paying him any mind, not paying him any attention. What was it about me that made you give this negative response to me as if I was repulsive, as if I was disgusting? Amazingly, even though I'm the same person, even though still interacted with each other, the interaction that stays with you the most is the negative interaction or the one that makes you feel insecure about yourself. I know it sounds very toxic, but when you ignore men, the same thing happens. That insecurity gets triggered because they start thinking to themselves, is she ignoring me because I'm not good enough? Is she ignoring me because I don't live up to the standards of all the other guys that, that like her and all the other guys that are pursuing her? And as soon as that insecurity gets triggered, what can he not think of? All of a sudden, he can't think of other girls. Some of you are living this in the opposite sense where a guy ignoring you is triggering that insecurity in you. And even more than you like the guy, you're thinking about how, why I feel insecure that you don't like me. So I'm trying to figure out why you don't like me, or I'm trying to figure out what I must do to get you to like me. Cause some of you might be like, oh, well, this is super manipulative. But the craziest part about it is for a lot of you guys have been using this trick and method on you to get you chasing after them and to get you interested in them when they don't even really have anything to offer. Let's discuss validation. You ignore this man, right? You're not texting him. You're not calling him. He's going to begin seeking after your validation because their insecurity is triggered. What do they immediately start doing? They start seeing, thinking about how they can get your approval. When you become insecure about a situation, especially about how a person feels towards you, then you start immediately thinking of how you can gain their approval so that you no longer are insecure about how that person feels towards you. Now his brain starts working on how can I receive validation from you? Because all I've felt is the insecurity that you don't like me. And see, the reason that this all works out in your favor is because now you have a guy thinking of how can I do the absolute most to be seen and appreciated by her that she'll like me, she'll want to be with me, and she'll do what? She'll pick me. And all you have to do is say, huh, you know, I was thinking today, I, I, I kind of only like men who will buy me flowers. And before you can even finish saying it, he's at your door with flowers. Why? Because he wants to be the man that you want. And do you understand how that, that can be such a powerful position for you to be in? And why vice versa, for most of you who have been struggling with this, you've been in that position yourself. So the fact that you have been struggling in your relationships is not really because you're unattractive. It's more because when you really like a guy, your approach drastically changes. And then the response that you get from that man drastically changes as well. And the guys that you don't like, that you don't pay any mind to, those are the guys that you're ignoring. But those are the reason, the fact that you're ignoring him is triggering all these things that we're talking about here and is forcing him to chase after you. Ego boost. When you attach yourself to a man's ego 
and you are the reason that he is able to validate himself. You're also the reason that he'll feel insecure about himself. That's a very powerful place to be. When you can use your value as a woman and the fact that you're super desirable and everyone wants you and you're very scarce, if you get me, then that means you're the man. If you don't have access to me, then you're one of these peasants just like everyone else. But that's a good thing because now what happens? He has a lot of fear if he doesn't get you. I tell you guys all the time, what you should be seeking for is not love and adoration. What you actually should be seeking for if you want the men in your life to act right and treat you right is respect and fear because respect and fear will have the men that you actually want to build a relationship with. It will have them acting right. The vessel is you and the access to you now becomes a mirror to himself of how uh, capable or amazing he is or how worthless and useless he is. The motivation of actually making sure he doesn't mess up or go out and act a fool comes from not the fact that he loves and adores you so much, but it really and truthfully comes from the fear that he feels that if he were to do the wrong thing, he would instantly lose out on you and then instantly lose out on his ability to validate himself through you and his access to you. I want to talk about the initiative cycle. This is very, very important. I really want you all to be paying attention to this. So stop pooping if you're pooping. Okay. See, the thing is you've been used to in your relationships and in your talking stages, when you want something from a man, you beg and you plead for this thing to happen. When you finally put your foot down and you just ignore the man, you just ignore the man, just ignore him. Something really amazing is going to happen. The cobwebs in his brain that would naturally be of the function that would allow him to, you know, use his uh, brain power to start thinking of, oh, let me analyze okay clearly my partner or this person is upset let me think to the way i've treated them think to the things i've said think to the things i've done why that person might be upset oh i can identify i made them upset by doing this or doing that or it's probably this or probably that so then their mind starts thinking of what are some of the things I can do, some of the actions I can take to make that person feel at ease, to so show that my remorse or to solve this situation or to resolve this conflict? Let's say in terms of the initiative cycle, you start talking, uh, you start ignoring a guy since he has never planned in-person dates and you tell him that you're not a big texter, which I want you all to be doing and that it's best to see you in person. That's when he's going to get the best version of you. And then after that, you ignore ignore him. I wonder what I should do if I really like a girl and I want to see her more and speak to her more, but she's not available over the phone. A dinner date would be the best thing. And you don't got to say, I, that's what I was waiting for this entire time. All you say is, oh my gosh, you're such a smart, intelligent, capable man. I didn't even think or imagine that a dinner date would be the best thing that we could do in the situation that we're in. And then he says, you'll be even more shocked. I, I already booked us a reservation. You said you were free on next Friday. So I booked us a reservation next Friday at 7 p.m. And you're like, oh, my God, you are the most capable, smart man in all the land. They'll be able to think for themselves without waiting on you to beg or complain about something before they actually take initiative or make a change or try to do, uh, take action towards do, being the man that you need them to be. The addiction cycle. There's an addicting element to having someone that you seek validation from give you just a little tiny bit of validation. And when they give you that little tiny bit of validation, you like feel like you're in this euphoric state and you become addicted to the external validation that they make you feel, which is why you end up turning into a pikmisha. A pikmisha is just like a small little mouse that feeds on validation. That's what I want you to have in your mind. Okay. When you think of pikmisha, we want to flip that script. So we want to turn him, the guy that you're dating or talking to into a small little mouse that feeds on your validation. And you only, only, only give him just enough validation. You sprinkle it on his nose. You give him just enough validation to keep him still hungry, but never 
satisfied because the men start thinking to themselves, I really need this validation from you. And when you finally do agree to a date, even if you allow him to only go on one date with you uh, and he has to plan two weeks in advance to go on this date with you, that becomes self-validating. And now he becomes addicted to the cycle of, oh, okay, so I want to get validation from her. I want to get access to her. So if I go through taking the initiative of doing the thing or doing this particular thing or taking this particular action, I'm going to get access to her. If I get access to her, well, then I'm going to feel good about myself. If I feel good about myself, well, then that feels good. And I want to continue feeling good about myself. So I'm going to continue taking actions towards validating myself. See, this is where the intersection comes in where you be when you become like a master manipulator. You understand how to get people to do things that feels authentic to them because it also serves them in particular ways. This sounds very, 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 very strange. When you can continue on this cycle of giving him just a little bit of validation and just enough where he feels good about himself to go on and seek more validation, well, now you have this guy in a cycle where he's continuing to uh, find you fascinating and chase after you and pursue you uh, not just because you're amazing and you're awesome because you are, but also because he wants that validation from you.